guys, welcome to Miss Trinity Treats. Today I will be showing you how to make this fun and adorable sink cake with Buster Moon on the front and five different stages for each of the five finalists. And I'm going to top it off with the billboard sign with the word sing across the top just to give it more of the movie poster look. So let's begin by cutting and leveling our cake. Hey guys, so first what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of frosting in the center of our cake plate and then place your first cake layer on top of it. This is gonna hold it in place while you transport it. Then begin by taking a bread knife or a cake leveler and just pushing it all the way through your cake and keep it as level as possible. So now we're gonna frost the first layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pipe a circle around the outside of the cake and then fill it in. And then just smooth it with an offset spatula or a butter knife. I am now taking the second layer, which has already been leveled, and putting it upside down on top of the first layer. And I'm going to add the frosting the same way as I did with the first layer. After the three layers have been stacked, I'm going to take my bread knife and I'm going to saw down the sides a little bit. This is going to soften the sides so that it's not lumpy and it gives it a nice smooth finish when I go to cover it in fondant. And now I'm just going to add some more of my frosting along the sides and then smooth it out with an offset spatula or a butter knife. With the top, I'm just going to smooth it out and we're just going to place it in the fridge until it's no longer tacky to the touch. I am sprinkling cornstarch on my work area. In my black fondant, I'm just going to get it nice and pliable and then I'm going to begin rolling it out with my fondant roller. If you don't have a fondant roller, it's okay, you can use a rolling pin. After you roll out your fondant to the size of your cake, gently roll it over the top of your fondant roller and then drop it over the top of your cake. Carefully smooth out your fondant by pushing down and pulling and then tugging along the bottom just to kind of uh, get the wrinkles out. And do this all the way around. After you've smoothed out your fondant, just cut around the base of your cake and remove the excess. For the second layer, I'm also using a larger cake plate than I have on hand, so I'm going to cut the cake plate down to the size of the cake. Now in order for me to know where to put the straws for stability, I laid the cake on the top and measured the amount of inches from each side. So I'm just going to press in four straws two inches from the sides. Just wiggle it around a little bit inside the cake, pull it back up and snip it right at that thin line. And do that with the rest of your straws. To help stabilize the cake, I'm going to be using these two little wooden skewers. I am just going to place in these two skewers and then stick it at the frosting line and then push it back down into the cake. I'm going to start off by first making the red curtains. In order to make these curtain panels, I measured about three inches wide and about six inches long. Once I cut one out, I just went back, rolled out another piece of red fondant, laid the piece that I already had cut over the top of that red fondant, and just used that as a template to cut the rest of the pieces. To give my curtains more of a pleated shape, I first started off rounding off the edges of each side of my curtain panel. So I kind of just folded it and then folded it again. I marked two little lines about two inches apart on my cake with a little bit of water. This is going to be the spot where I adhere the top of the curtain to. Now when you're adhering this, make sure that it's still like got that pleated look. You, you still want it to fall in a pleated fashion. And then just attach it with a little bit of water. Now pinch the middle of the curtain in just slightly because this is where your rope is going to adhere to and then the rest of it kind of billow it out a little bit to make it look like it's falling on the stage. And so I took another piece of red fondant, I measured it at about 1 inch by 7 inches. I am going to use it to drape over the front in between two of my curtain panels to kind of really finish off the stage. And you just adhere this with a little bit of water. I wanted to add a layer effect to the top of that piece of curtain, so I just went back and added one more piece of 1 inch by 7 inch red fondant over the top of that one and then applying it with a little bit of water as well. Now do this with the rest of your cake. 
Now we're going to work on the ropes that are holding the curtains open. Now roll out two pieces of yellow fondant about the same size and then add a little bit of water on one of the strips and then crisscross them to kind of give it a braided look. I'd say this is probably a good seven inches long. I am going to cut this one and freeze, making the center cut a little bit wider than the ends. And then I'm gonna apply it to the pinched area of the curtain with a little bit of water. The second section of that rope, I am going to apply it to the center of that loop with a little bit of water. And then the third piece, apply it behind that loop with a little bit of water as well. Now we're moving on to Buster Moon's character. What I did was I got this printable online. Um, you can find these anywhere. And so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna cut out his head and then I'm gonna go back and cut out the top portion of his body as this is all that will fit on the case. After rolling out a piece of white fondant, back and carefully cut out each of his ears. Lay them on top of your white fondant and using a sharp utensil, just go around and cut that shape out of the fondant. I forgot to cut his bow tie off, so I'm just gonna cut it here and, and then I'm going to use the white fondant again to trace around his head. Now onto the gray. I cut out the top portion of his head and removed his mouth as this is the only part on his face that is gray. And then I laid it directly onto the white fondant to make sure that it fits. And since the ears have a gray portion along the top, I'm just gonna cut that gray portion out and then lay it on my gray fondant and trim it out as well. And then go back and apply it to the top of the ear with a little bit of water. Do this with both of your ears and your head. Now I'm gonna cut out his nose, but I'm not gonna cut the face apart. I wanna keep it intact so that when I go to line up the features later, everything lines up perfectly to the character. And now cut out both eyes. I'm using this tip number 12, and I'm just gonna press out two circles, and then I'm gonna lay the eyeballs on each of the circles and, and use my sharp cutting tool to cut out the shape of his eyes exactly. Using that same tip number 12, I'm I'm gonna punch out two little black circles as these are gonna serve as Buster's pupils. And then I'm going to cut out the nose. In this picture, Buster's pupils are flattened slightly at the bottom of each eye, so I'm just gonna clip off the ends a little. Now I'm gonna place my template over the gray area of his head and then add a little bit of water where the eyes are gonna sit and then place his eyes in those spots. And then I'm gonna do the same with the nose. Now I'm rolling out a small piece of black fondant and these are gonna serve as his eyebrows. Line up to the picture I have to see how long they need to be and then apply them to the top of his eyes with a little bit of water. To make his mouth, I'm gonna take that white piece that I cut off for his mouth. I'm just gonna trim off the black portion. I'm gonna cut it out of black fondant and apply it to his face using the template with a little bit of water. I just rolled out some white fondant and I'm using the template for the bottom half of his body and I'm going to just cut out everything, every little um, spot, fingers, uh, the microphone, bottom, everything that is in this picture is going to get cut out in the white. This is going to help me line everything up later when I go to put it all together. Now go ahead and cut out all the details like you did with the head and apply it with a little bit of water. So just take the back end of the bottom half of his body and apply some water and then line him up to the bottom of your cake and press him onto the fondant. And do the same with his head. Now we're going to work on all the finalist characters. For these, we're just gonna cut them out of the paper. We're not gonna separate um, any of their clothing or anything. We want everything to stay in one piece. Now, after I've rolled out some white fondant, I've applied a little bit of water to the back of the characters. This didn't work so well because the, the paper kept absorbing the water. I found that applying the water to the fondant directly first and then laying the character on worked best and just take your sharp tool and cut around the whole character. 
I'm just going to apply a little bit of water to the back of each of the characters and then place them directly onto the cake and each of their little stages. I bought this bag of yellow six slits so that I could add a little bit of character to both um, bases of the tiers. I feel as though they give the appearance of theater lights. I just took a little bit of white frosting and applied it to the back of each of the yellow six slits and then placed them right on the seam where the cake plate and the fondant meet. And the same for the top, I did just under Buster Moon's body and all the way around the base of the top tier of the cake. I printed out the sign that reads Sing from the movie poster and I just cut out each of the individual letters and I'm placing it directly on some rolled out yellow fondant. I'm cutting it out with my sharp tool and then I'm going to place it aside to harden slightly. I'm using the small end of my Wilton's tip number three to punch out little circles for the sign. Now in order to give them a little bit of a flatter shape, I just press them down with, with one of my fingertips. I applied a little bit of water on just one of my letters and then added each of these circles with the tip of a toothpick. To make the structure behind the lettering, I'm going to be using these wooden skewers. As you can see in this picture, you can tell where they line up and where each of the letters sit on that structure. I'm going to lay my letters just on one of the skewers and then using a little food coloring marker, I'm just going to mark where I want to cut it. I cut it at that spot and then I did it one more time so that I ended up with four of the same exact size pieces. I lined them up with the letters of the word sing and then took another skewer and laid it on the side of it. This is going to give me the dimensions of how tall the sign needs to be to press into my cake. And I just cut two of those just like that. So I'm just going to dip my skewers in some black candy melt. So for now, I'm just going to dip one end in and then lay them on a piece of wax paper to harden. And once they've hardened, I'm going to flip them over and do the other side. And now that they've all hardened, I'm going to take my sharp utensil and just trim off any excess pieces that might be hanging off from it. And then line my skewers back onto the wax paper, but upside down this time. I want the flat side facing up. Now line all your letters up once more to where they would go on the sign. And I'm going to pipe out a line onto the flat part of the larger skewers and then place it directly on the flat part of the other skewers. And then I'm just going to let them harden. Once it's completely hardened, you should be able to flip it over and line up your letters again. Apply your black candy mouths to the back of each letter and then place them directly onto the structure. This should keep them nice and sturdy. Now that my sign is completely hardened, I'm going to stand it up carefully on top of the cake and using a sharp knife, I'm just going to cut a hole where the legs are going to be pressed into the cake. I'm making my holes a little bit wider to give it enough space and then I'm going to press my sign in right in those two spots. So at the end I decided that I didn't want the bottom of the cake plate showing so I'm just going to add a little strip of red fondant to the front of the cake plate with a little bit of water. And that's it. Sing inspired cake that we made today. We were able to fit all five finalists on five different parts of the cake, giving them their own little stage. We've got Buster Moon here in the middle, and then my favorite with the word sing across the top because it almost looks like between Buster Moon and the sing word, like the movie poster. And don't forget to stick around at the video because you'll be able to see a fun game that my husband and I have come up with for a little bit of added fun. I will be posting pictures of this on my Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages. If you like this tutorial, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. He's going to give me Bye a song, guys. and then I am going to sing the song, but somehow I'm going to incorporate the word sing into the song. Go ahead. You can't sing this. Go. <laughs> can't sing this. I just want to sing. All my singing ladies, all my singing ladies, all my singing ladies, all my singing ladies. <laughs> See a red door and I want to sing it black. Sing Caroline. Singing my religion. <laughs> she was the singing queen. Be Buster Brown, at the Buster Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
I got my pointer finger out. Oh no. Oh yeah. Just pointer your fingers out. <laughs> How can I change that to a sing?